This is Nick with another instructional fire video series. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the Oasis valve. The Oasis is used in three situations. One, a very long supply line. Two, a very steep driveway with a lot of elevation gain. And three, a low pressure hydrant situation. The Oasis valve looks complicated at first glance, but it's really quite simple. A four and a half female connects to the hydrant, two three and a half males, and one three and a half female connect to the pumping engine and relay engines. It's important to note that incoming units may need a three and a half to four and a half increaser or reducer to adapt. On top of the Oasis, you'll see a clapper indicator arrow, a carry handle, and a ball valve handle. Inside the Oasis, the clapper valve and ball valve work together to make sure water is always flowing to the attack engine. In the first position, the ball valve is closed and water goes directly from the hydrant to the attack engine. Next, when the handle of the ball valve is turned, water will go both to the attack engine and to the relay engine. Then finally, when the relay engine boosts the pressure, the clapper valve will close and water will be boosted by the relay engine and pumped directly to the attack engine. As a next in resource, it's important to remember the overall goal of this operation, which is to eliminate all friction loss between the relay engine or the hydrant and the pumping engine. Put simply, by pumping the Oasis correctly, you are moving the hydrant from the bottom of the driveway or the bottom of the hill and placing it next to the pumping engine. Now that we know how the Oasis works, let's go through the steps to set it up. First, spot the engine as close as you can to the Oasis. Engage your pump and set it to RPM mode. When you approach the Oasis, this is what it will look like. Note the position of the clapper valve and the ball valve is closed. This is a good time to attach reducers or increasers if needed. Next, attach LDH from the Oasis to the intake of the fire engine. Once the LDH is connected, backfill the line. Next, connect LDH from the Oasis to a master discharge on the fire engine. Once both connections are made, you can operate the ball valve handle. Once back at the engine, note the intake pressure and open the master discharge line. Now it's time to calculate PDP. You will need to ask the pumping engine for the length of lay, elevation gain, and GPM float. Pump 20 from pump 21. I'm in position to pump the Oasis. What is your GPM, length of lay, and elevation gain? An acronym you can use to help you remember this information is GESSER for gallons, length of supply, elevation gain, and the residual at the relay pumper. In this example, let's say the pumping engine is flowing 600 gallons per minute, the length of supply line between the two engines is 400 feet, there's an elevation gain of 50 feet between the two engines, and the residual pressure at the relay pumper is 30 psi. By looking at our pump chart, we see that for every 100 feet of 4 inch flowing 600 GPM, our friction loss is 7 psi. Multiplying that by our 400 feet, we get 28 PSI. We know that for every foot of elevation gain, we have a half a PSI of friction loss. So for 50 feet, we will add 25 PSI. And finally, we noted that the residual at our pump intake was 30 PSI. Adding all these up, we get 83 PSI for our PDP. Once you set your pump, it's a good idea to radio the pumping engine to ensure that they have adequate pressure. Now that we are boosting the pressure, 
we can see that the clapper valve has automatically moved positions. At this point, it's a good idea to take a step back and check for kinks in all your lines, as well as attach a safety line or weld the hydrant. Thanks for watching this instructional video about the Oasis valve. If you have any further questions, ask somebody else because that's everything that I know about this thing.